Mountain Man Medical has name brand proven trauma medical supplies with a price match guarantee to ensure you get the right gear at the right price. Check them out at get-asp.com slash mountain man. All right, so the last thing I need to do is give you your lane assignments. Here's what I want you guys to do. Right now, you're only gonna need a magazine with the five rounds. You don't need anything more than that. Uh, I want you to go ahead and bring, bring your gear, the magazine, your rifle, eyes and ears, out to the 50 yard line, line up in, your, uh, in front of your target. We're gonna have to go down and uh, do some target repair. We have, our 50 yard line is literally in front of the hooch, that's as far as I could get it. So what I want is I want everybody to be just in front of this hooch so when we go prone. So if I can get some of these bags and stuff like this, if I can just get them moved to behind the table, that'll free up people to get prone. Guys, don't forget, um, if you got something to use as support, I would prefer you bring it out so that we can uh, get it set up. All right, shooters, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with doing a little warm-up drill. And the warm-up drill is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna give a command, load and make ready. On that command, protect your eyes and ears. Go ahead and bring the gun up to your workspace, finger straight, safety on. Then go ahead and take your magazine of five rounds, push, pull, and then charge the gun. Now, the first couple of iterations are going to be with the action closed. So when I get behind the line, I'll tell you, close your actions. You'll go ahead, close the action. Then I'll have you go ahead, Bring the gun up to your workspace, then I'll have you grab the magazine of five. You'll have all the parts right there in front of you. And then I'll give you the command, load and make ready. Push, pull, make sure you get that motion correct. Go ahead, charge the gun. There are three ways to charge it. I forgot to cover this. First is I use a pinch grip. I pinch the charging handle with my thumb. Pull back. When you're pulling back, make sure you pull all the way to the rear and release. Do not ride the action forward. Second method, lobster claw where both fingers go over the ears of the charging handle and I pull back. All right, that works well if you're a lefty and you gotta kinda, or that works well if you're gonna rotate the rifle into the left, to the left direction, but then your ejection port is facing up. And then the last is a judo chop, where you kinda take the heel of your hand and you bring it back in this action. I don't like this particular method because it puts a lot of lateral tension on the charging handle. I've actually seen them bend as a result. All right, so, either a pinch grip or lobster claw, whichever one. Once you charge the gun, I want you to first re-grip. The activity of checking your gun should always be done after you've checked the targets or checked your AO, right? Don't just arbitrarily program yourself, tap, tug, roll, rack, and I'm gonna charge it, or now I'm gonna check it, and then you're not paying attention to what's happening downrange. Right? Make a decision that you're going to check your gun. Don't make it automatic that you're going to check your gun. Does that make sense? All right. Shooters, go ahead and close the action. Go ahead, retrieve a magazine of five rounds. Bring the gun up to your workspace. All right, shooters, go ahead, push, pull. Charge the action. Regrip. Now, check your optic, check your light. Good. Remember, when you're checking the gun, you have two options. You can check the magazine, but if you didn't look at the magazine before you put it in, can't use it. Second is to check the chamber visually. I don't care which one you use, just pick one or use them both well. All right, shooters, bring the gun back to your workspace. Finger straight, safety on. Remove the mag, stow it in a pocket. Good, eject the round. Lock the action open, switch your grip. Now, visually inspect the chamber, visually inspect the mag well. Look away and do that twice. Always do that twice. Very good. Gentlemen, close the action for me. Next, bring the gun back up to your workspace. Grab a magazine now with four rounds. Go ahead, push, pull. Charge it. Regrip. Now check your optic, check your light, check your chamber. All right, good job. Shooters, go ahead and bring the gun back to your workspace. Go ahead, finger straight, safety on, remove the mag, eject the round, lock the action open. All right, visually inspect the chamber, Magwell. Look away, do that again. Fantastic. Shooters, go ahead, close the action. Go ahead, grab the magazine with three rounds. Go ahead, 
Load and make ready. All right, good job. Don't forget, when you load and make ready, you're not only making sure you got your eyes and ears, check the chamber, check the optic, check the light. All right, shooters, bring the gun back to your workspace. Go ahead and remove the magazine. Go ahead and eject the round. Lock the action open. Good. Once you've done that, double check the safeties, let them hang. Okay, so a couple things real quick. First, everybody's looking good. Everybody's working well. I don't have any, any, any issues, any big issues. You're learning kind of like how to work the gun, but what I want you to pay attention to is how many of you are actually looking at what you're doing, right? Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm asking you, is it necessary? Or have you just always looked at the gun because that's what you've always done? So on this next iteration, what we're going to do is we're going to go through loading and making ready, just like we were doing, with the exception of our eyes being closed. All right? So we're going to start with the eyes closed, and then on my command, load and make ready, you'll have the gun at the high ready. I'm sorry, you have the gun at the workspace, magazine in your hand. You'll go through with your eyes closed, push, pull, charge it, push, pull, close the bolt. And then once you're back on your gun, I want you to open your eyes and do your weapons check. Okay? All right, shooters. <clears throat> go ahead, bring the gun to your workspace. We're also going to do this with the action open. All right? Go ahead, grab the magazine that now only has two rounds. Close your eyes. Shooters, load and make ready. Good. Once you have both hands back on the gun, open your eyes, do your weapons check. All right, good job. Now, shooters, bring the gun back to your workspace. What I'm going to have you do is you're going to unload and clear with your eyes closed. Once you have ejected the round, the action's open, open your eyes, safety check. Shooters, unload and clear, please. All right, good job. Next, shooters, I want you to bring the magazine with two rounds in it. Oh, one round. Sorry, one round. My bad. Thank you. One round. Go ahead and come to that uh, workspace with the magazine of one round. Close your eyes. Load and make ready. All right, shooters. Go ahead. Bring the gun up to your workspace. Close your eyes. Unload and clear, please. Unload and clear. All right, double check the safeties, let them hang. Fantastic. All right, so a couple things. Some of you are noticing that your sling may not be properly configured. I get it, we'll work on that, all right? What you want is you want your sling to always fight for you. You never wanna fight against your sling. So that means that you've gotta have it properly adjusted, properly attached, all that other business. Some of you that are having problems, you, in other words, the sling should always be in the ready position, the ready carry position, and then you just let it hang. If you have to swim into it or swim out of it, then it's not working for you, right? So the five things that the sling needs to do, number one, not interfere with my ability to shoot. Number two, not interfere with my ability to assume the ready positions. Number three, not interfere with my ability to go from right to left, left to right on my shoulders. Number four, my ability, not interfere with my ability to get into shooting positions. And number five, carry the rifle, right? But that's the last thing it does, the last thing. Everybody that I, I shouldn't say everybody, a lot of people that I see are more worried about how the sling carries the rifle and interfering with all those other things than I need to be able to fight, ready, position, and shoulders, then carry. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Folks, you should have five live rounds to the low and right-hand side of your body position. I want you to maintain muzzle discipline. This is a test. Collect those live rounds and then reload them into the empty magazine. Go ahead. <laughs> 
All right, once you've got those five rounds, please reload them back into your empty magazine. Whenever you're running the gun, your gun manipulations have to be, they have to be correct, but they also have to be automated. They can't be requiring time, energy, or attention. Now there'll come a time when I need to focus my attention on the gun because it stopped working and I need to understand why. But there's a non-diagnostic approach to that as, as opposed to the diagnostic approach. And we'll talk about that a little bit later.